Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Blue Ridge Middle School Town Hall. I'm the principal, Brian Bell, and I'm glad you're joining us this afternoon. We are broadcasting from the Sheila Leitner Library. So our Blue Ridge Library, we've renamed, so you can see part of it behind me, we've renamed the Sheila Leitner Library after our 46-year veteran, Mrs. Leitner, who just retired last year. So we're really excited to be coming to you from our Leitner Library. We're excited today about providing information to our community about the very important return to learn for students in secondary education. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. The purpose of today's meeting, and it's gonna run about an hour, is to go over the conditions for students and staff for our January 21st start. So today's presentation will both be a slideshow and an open opportunity to send in questions, which we are monitoring. So we're going to get to the open-ended questions at the end. We already sent out a community survey, and thank you so much. We did get plenty of questions back to us, probably around 50. We tried to incorporate all of those questions as answers in today's presentation. We know that the presentation is going to generate more questions, and at the bottom of every screen is a bit.ly, which attaches to a survey, which we are monitoring in real time. But we're going to have that question session at the end. Hopefully, through the, about the next 22 slides, we're going to answer a large number of your questions. We are recording this and we'll post it on the website. We actually had one at two o'clock earlier today and we posted those slides already, but we're going to also post the audio. So we've divided today into a series of groups. The first group is talking about the selection process because that's imp a, an important component. Another is about teaching and learning. So what will teaching and learning look like in concurrent instruction? So we want to be very clear about that. So that way, as you're making your choice, because the choice is binding, that you are fully aware of what it looks like as compared to right now, which is all distance learning. The other thing we're going to talk about is safety. We're going to talk about the safety conditions we're setting up in our school. What happens if a student or a staff member gets sick? What is the process that we'll go through to continue to keep us safe? and to keep teaching and learning moving forward. And finally, we're going to talk about school structure, such as what will lunch look like? What will walking through the hallways look like? What will a classroom setup look like? What does it look like for students to arrive at school in the morning? Because we have walkers and we have bus riders and we have kiss and ride folks. So what's that gonna look like? We're gonna try to address all of those so you have as clear a picture as we can paint in this time period as possible, because we know that the choice coming up for all of our families is important for the new year. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And uh, I am going to be joined by two outstanding assistant principals. I'm very, very lucky to have such wonderful educators who help to run and support the community of Blue Ridge Middle School. So Mrs. Griffith Cochran and Mr. Boland will be joining me as well and then uh, taking a few slides and I'll come back at the end. And of course, I will do all of the question answer so that all of your questions have an opportunity to be responded to. So I am sure that uh, you may leave today with additional questions and it's no problem to email us, call us, even though we're presenting today, it's no problem at all to to keep continuing to uh, talk with us. Okay, so I'm just gonna jump right into the presentation and get going. So if you're just joining me, welcome. Okay, I'm Principal Brian Bell and welcome. If you're just joining in, we're just kind of getting started here. This is our first slide of Return to School 2020. And you'll see at the bottom, this is very important. I just wanna make sure that I highlight this. You'll see at the bottom something called a bit.ly slash backslash blue questions. That, if you'll put that into your browser at any time, you can send us questions and we'll answer them at the end. So we're going to go ahead and go through our presentation, but at any time, please submit a question. 
As you can see on this first slide, our role in the return to learn is to as safely as possible uh, bring back students so they're physically and emotionally well, they're taught, and they're safe. So we appreciate the support of parents and families as we keep moving forward. We want your feedback the entire time. I hope that you feel that the first quarter from our Blue Ridge teaching staff, as well as the beginning of the second quarter, has gone well for your child. I will tell you that the Blue Ridge teachers that here are outstanding. They've worked extremely hard to make distance learning as successful as possible for every child. And we will continue as we move forward towards January 21st and make concurrent teaching as successful for every child. Okay. So right now, you have a survey opportunity. The survey we're collecting data ends the 20th of November. The survey specifically is asking if you'd like your child to attend in-person learning, which we call a hybrid student, and that would be for two days a week, or stay a distant learner. So. The two days a week that if you pick hybrid will either be Tuesday, Wednesday as an AB pair or Thursday, Friday as an AB pair. You may be thinking, how will I know whether my child, if I pick hybrid, attends Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday, Friday? We will address that in the PowerPoint. Uh, so this particular selection is again about whether you want your child to return to in person learning for two days a week or stay distance learning. All right, here we go. So second semester preferences. As it said, as I just mentioned before, there are two groups. We have our hybrid students who will come to school for two days of in-person learning and we'll have our distance learners who similar to right now will remain at home for their distance instruction. We will be teaching class Tuesday through Friday. It's just that the hybrid students will come in for two of those days, and then another group of hybrid students will come in for two of those days. As you can see in this slide, this is about starting the conversation around safety. Blue Ridge classrooms are going to be set up for eight feet of distance when possible between students. Working with the CDC and the Virginia Department of Health, we know that eight feet of separation for students who are wearing masks, even if a student tests positive, they aren't in that bubble where they may have to isolate or quarantine. So we're looking for eight feet of separation in Blue Ridge classrooms. However, that may not be possible. And the school board does allow us to go to six feet of center to center separation. That might occur if we have high hybrid return rates. So for example, if 90% of the population of our school students want to return, then those extra students may require a tighter radius around desks to go from eight feet down to six feet. And the school board allows us to do that. Students would be wearing masks the entire time as well as the teacher. So this is an important understanding in your selection since the selections are binding. If you choose distance learning now, then in January or February all the way to the end of the year, if you were to want hybrid, that would not be possible to switch and vice versa would be true as well. So understanding that these classrooms can be set up differently is an important component to the safety and learning of your child. Again, in every opportunity we can, we are going to strive for the most distance possible so that within the instructional culture and climate of classrooms, they still stay safe. I think this slide does a great job at sort of showing a graphic of what I'm talking about. In the slide, it shows one group of students as hybrid, another group of students as hybrid, and then finally that distance group. And if you don't mind, I'm just going to sort of take some numbers and put numbers into this. Let's suppose we have a group of 20 students 
that are in a Mass 7 class or a pre-algebra class or a Foundations of Algebra. So we'll say we've got 20 students in Foundations of Algebra. And at the end of the window of selection, 16 of those 20 students elect hybrid return. Four stay distance. We would take those 16 and divide them into eight and eight as best we can. It may not break completely evenly. So we may have to do something with those 16 to go 10 and six or something of nine and seven, but we're going to aim for eight and eight. Eight of those students would be selected to come A, B, Tuesday, Wednesday, and the other eight Thursday, Friday. The important part is that all of the students are learning at the same time in the classroom, either in person or virtually. So if you look at Tuesday where it says A day, you have those eight kids in person. You have the other eight kids who are not in person, but they will be on Thursday, but they're still actually in that lesson. And you have the four kids. So you still have all 20 kids in the lesson at the same time a portion in person and a portion at home. So the teacher in a concurrent model will have to teach both the students in front of the, in front of him or her, but also the students who are through a Google Meet remotely coming in as they're learning now. So the teacher will have a group right in front of them. So if I was teaching, I would have you all watching me, learning from me, but I'd also have a class of real uh, in-person learning students in front of me. So those 20 kids would actually be in class each day. It's just a portion of them would be in person. So I think that this chart does a nice job sort of uh, parsing that out. The other thing that I think is important is that the students will not stay in one classroom and have the teachers move to them. They will actually physically move through the building and we have safety measures in place and mitigation strategies to keep them safe in the hallways and the restrooms and lunch and different things like that. But they just won't sit in one place all day. Uh, we don't believe that that's in the best interest of, of, of students. We think it's healthier for them to move around if we can keep them safe to do so. And we, and we believe that our mitigation strategies will do that. So they will move from block one to block two to block three, similar to what we did in the past when kids were here and moving around. As you can see, Monday stays asynchronous. That means that Monday stays just as it is right now. So Monday is a time for teachers to work with students. It is a time for students to prepare for learning, and that will stay exactly as is for the second semester. All right, so those are some introductions introducing slides. I am going to turn the slideshow over to Mrs. Nancy Griffith Cochran. Thank you, Mr. Bell. Hello, everyone. I hope you're all doing well, and it's really nice to see you out there in virtual world. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the instruction of concurrent teaching and what some of these models might entail. To recap, concurrent teaching is simultaneous teaching. So the students who are present in the classroom, as well as the students who are joining virtually from home or a remote location are taught at the same time. As Mr. Bell said, all students will attend Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, synchronously and simultaneously. So the hybrid set of students who are in the classroom will be learning with the set of students who are virtual, as well as the hybrid students who are on their home days. And then on the other two days, the reverse will occur. But all four days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, will be simultaneous instruction. Some of the synchronous strategies are noted on this slide, but I'll just review a few. Whole group instruction is typically a, a class start, and the teacher is able to reach all learners with a whole group lesson. At, at some point after an introductory discussion or the lesson, there will be small group instruction. There might be independent work. There might be breakout rooms with student discussions or targeted interventions. Formative and summative assessments might take place during class. The last point is very important. Teachers are planning how different groups of students will access the content and learn. At Blue Ridge, our teachers meet in content learning teams. They meet with their fellow teachers who teach the same subject and grade level, and they also meet as a department. But those grade level teams are currently working to develop instruction that will meet all learners simultaneously. 
Uh, the slide that you see now is an excellent diagram of what a sample lesson plan might look like. Uh, as you can see, the class for this particular lesson plan opens with an opening and a whole group section. And it then goes into some of those small group independent learning activities. It might be a student working alone on an activity. It might be the teacher working on a strategy with a group of students. It might be that there is a discussion of a, a book talk and they're, they're in different breakout rooms and, and groups. So the students in the room can join with the students who are at home virtually via the computer and the Google Meet or the breakout room. And then finally, this lesson might end with a closure activity and exit ticket. While the order of these could vary from day to day and lesson to lesson, this gives you an idea of what a lesson might look like under the concurrent model. Uh, I love this slide because you can see some adults in our county who did a, a simulation pilot. Um, obviously, if this were a school day, it would be students in those desks, but you can see that they are spaced appropriately. And on the screen at the front of that classroom, there are little icons. Those icons were other students who were joining the uh, simulation Google Meet virtually. So that's exactly what would happen during a school day. You would have students here in the desk who were hybrid students. And then at home, you would have the second set of hybrid students who are learning from home those two days, as well as the DL students. All of these students will stay in the classes that they're currently in. So they will have the same teacher, the same classmates. They just might be in different locations. And finally, here's a picture of one of our very own Blue Ridge classrooms. You can see that we're getting them set up right now. The desks are spaced appropriately. Uh, students who are hybrid would come and sit there. And then on the screen, there would be um, the, the lesson of the teacher. And there would also probably be a computer in the room that actually has the icons of the students uh, so that they're joining virtually and learning along with the students who are currently present in the classroom. Finally, I'd like to just speak briefly about elective classes. Those are also very important instructional classes here at Blue Ridge. And they're, for the most part, the idea of the students being present and the students being home is very similar. However, there are maybe some different supplies in these classes or activities that we'll highlight. So art will be using individual supplies and fewer supplies. Musical instruments will have bonnets. That's basically a covering that protects uh, the instrument from releasing certain um, um, particles from one's body from <laughs> coming out the other end. Because when you blow through a certain instrument, you might need to um, have that not spread because of the social distancing guidelines. Same thing is true with singing. Um, we won't have bonnets, but we will have to space the students um, so that the um social distancing guidelines are met they're a little bit longer with students because of the projection you need to be further apart so that's why there's a 10 feet apart notation on this slide for band and chorus pe activities will also support uh, physical distancing sanitation of equipment as appropriate and we are encouraging and lcps is encouraging students to wear comfortable clothes to uh, reduce and or eliminate the need for locker changes in our facts classes, uh, cooking demonstrations will still take place, but we do wanna let you know that for the purpose of hybrid learners, it would be demonstration if it's a cooking lesson. There are lots of other lessons and activities in facts, but for the cooking lessons, it would be observed by the students who were present at school as well as the students at home. Uh, tech ed lessons will also be developed to allow students to use fewer supplies. There will still be module completion, which is completely capable through the Chromebook. So much of that aspect will remain consistent with current practices. Uh, this time, I'm pleased to turn the presentation over to my fellow assistant principal, Mr. Matt Bolin, and he will be discussing some safety measures. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. GC. So just as a reminder, if you have questions that you would like to submit, uh, you can use the bit.ly link there, uh, backslash blue questions, and that will take you to a question document and you can write in your questions and we'll get to those here in a few minutes. I am gonna talk to you about uh, several safety measures and school protocols uh, designed to keep us all safe. So each morning, uh, students and staff members We'll need to complete a daily questionnaire through our Qualtrics system. And this questionnaire will be emailed or texted 
I believe you have the choice to switch to a text after you get the initial email uh, and that, that you would fill out to, it's a symptom checker that you would fill out each day. We will have increased opportunities for students to use hand sanitizer. There will be random temperature checks each morning as kids come into the building or are in their homeroom. Custodians will clean high touch areas. Uh, those will be done on a two hour cleaning rotation and that will be done throughout the day. Our school nurse in collaboration with Student Health Services will facilitate contact tracing if we do have any uh, positive cases of COVID-19 here at school. And to help with air circulation, we, have, we will have HEPA filters in classrooms and we will also have upgraded air filters installed in all of our HV, HVAC systems throughout the building. Uh, really important to note that Loudoun County Public Schools does not require classroom cleaning between blocks. However, all classrooms will be thoroughly cleaned and sanitized each evening. Uh, the thinking there is to uh, protect students from a buildup of chemicals. Uh, they want to avoid uh, students being overexposed to those chemicals. All right, some additional safety measures and to reduce congestion points, we've got some things in place here. Uh, we will not be issuing lockers this year. So no, no uh, house area lockers, no PE lockers. So students will need to carry their backpacks uh, with all their supplies, uh, their lunchbox, their musical instrument, uh, their jacket if it's cold. Uh, if it's a small music instrument, they can put it in their backpack or carry it with them. If it's a large musical instrument, we do we'll, we will make uh, accommodations for those within our house area for storage. There will be no uh, restroom breaks during class. Those will be done um, not between classes, they will be done during class. Uh, this will also reduce congestion points. And hallways are marked uh, for six feet of social distancing with specialized tape. To keep all of our visitors safe uh, and staff safe until further notice, all of our meetings and school events will be done virtually. This includes uh, school awards, parent-teacher conferences, PTO meetings, and various uh, child study and special ed meetings. And if you do need to ske schedule one of those appointments, please do so with your counselor, dean, or other administrative staff. We've had quite a few questions about breakfast and lunch. So students attending school on a hybrid model will have the opportunity to pick up a grab and go free of charge breakfast each morning as they come into school. Those will be available in each house area. Students would then take that grab and go breakfast to their first or fifth block classroom to eat it. Students will be eating lunch in the cafeteria and students may bring their own lunch. They could bring a bag lunch or pick up a free grab and go lunch in our cafeteria. If you're interested in finding out what we have for lunch, that's posted on our school website. All right, here's a picture of what our current cafeteria looks like. As you can see, the tables have been removed. Uh, those tables allowed for up to 12 kids to sit relatively uh, close uh, and, and socialize, and that is, is different. Uh, we have desks, student, student desks in our cafeteria now that are um, spaced according to CDC regulations but we did want you to see a picture of what that cafeteria will look like. We do anticipate having three lunch shifts uh, by grade level, um, but we're still, that is still a, a work in progress scheduling uh, that, that component of lunch. If your child is gonna ride a bus to and from school, they will be required to wear a mask at all times and they will be evenly spaced uh, on the bus for physical distancing. This may reduce the capacity that a school bus can, can handle if there are more kids uh, signed up for hybrid, which could lead to double runs, which may impact uh, some drop off and pickup times, but transportation will communicate that with you through parent view as we get closer to the 21st. And some additional important arrival and departure procedural items along with our, our, our bell schedule due to uh, bus routing. Uh, Ms. Hawk, I've got a 
little message up here for me. Sorry, it says the meeting is ending. We're going to fix that. There, there we go. Okay, we're good. So due to some, some routing with transportation, our bell schedule will revert back to what it was last year. So homeroom will start at 8.50, uh, starting on the 21st of January. And school will not open for students until 8.30. So our doors will not open for kids until 8.30. So if you're um, dropping your student off, if, you're, if the child gets a ride with their parent, and you get here before 8.30 and it's cold outside, the best thing to do is just to be awake in the car until the, the doors open at, at 8.30. Uh, once they get in the building, they'll go straight to their first and fifth block class. Uh, they, like I mentioned, they, they can have an opportunity to pick up breakfast on their way. And we will use different entrances and exits based on who their first and fifth block teacher is. If you plan on picking up your child for an early dismissal, all parents and gardens will physically have to come in the building to sign your child out and show appropriate ID. All right, at this point, I am going to go monitor the questions and turn it back over to Mr. Bell. And Ms. Hawk, our clicker is not advancing slides. I guess I broke it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Boland. Hi, everyone. If you're just joining us or you've been here a short amount of time, please notice down at the bottom, we have a bit.ly, which does connect to a live survey document. We're getting a lot of excellent questions. In a moment, we will conclude the PowerPoint portion and go into a lot of the questions that are being asked and <clears throat> kind of take those one at a time. And we encourage you to please ask, but I want you to know that we're always here. Please email or call us anytime, certainly in this period of selection, but even after the period of selection, so that we can answer your questions moving forward. We want, as best we can, every parent to have a clear understanding. And we'll stay on the phone or the Google Meet or whatever we need to to make that happen so that you, as best we can, have a clear understanding of what the conditions of instruction and safety is at Blue Ridge before you make your selection or after you make your selection if you have a question. Right now, I'm going to talk a little bit about quarantines and isolation. So I think that is a very important. What happens if someone gets sick? What is the process of quarantining students or staff? So please understand that we're gonna work very hard to have a bubble around each of the students. So that would be eight feet if possible. And, and if the eight feet isn't possible, then we'll go down to six feet to maintain that bubble around kids. All kids will wear their masks during the day, other than eating. The staff will have their mask on all day long. We are building every classroom to have a eight foot buffer for the teachers to teach in front of the class, but to be in that buffer. So they'll be eight feet from the closest student. Please understand that means that the traditional way of teachers coming to a student to help them isn't necessarily going to be able to occur. Students will not be able to work with each other the way we traditionally had kids sort of partner up. Similar to distance learning, students will have to work even when they're together in school virtually to keep them safe and distanced apart. By doing that, if a student is ill or a staff member, the bubble that we create helps protect us from, say, wiping out a whole class or having a mass spread. So as you see on this slide, we're going to work very hard to maintain that and to have a system that maintains that. If students are sick, then we have contact tracing either through the Department of Health or our school nurse to discuss with kids who may have been impacted by that if they need to isolate or quarantine as well. So that is uh, the way we're going to mitigate quarantines and isolations. We're going to talk now about, I'm good, I'm good, about staff members. If a staff member gets sick, there's a couple things that could happen. If a staff member is sick, and that would be COVID or flu or something like that, and they simply cannot come to class, the students who are hybrid that day will be in class. 
we would have a proctor to watch those students because the teacher, if they're well enough, would still teach from home. So even though the students are in school, they would just uh, remote in to the class so they still have an opportunity to be taught by their teacher. However, in scenario two, if the teacher is too sick to teach, whether that's COVID or just an illness or whatever, then we would hire a substitute to, to help uh, instruction that day. And again, in scenario three, if the teacher is quarantined but not able to teach, then we would secure a substitute. If we were not able to secure a substitute, we would lean on an asynchronous lesson, but we would work hard to always have an adult available either by substitute or by proctor. In some cases, if the teacher teaches from home for all of semester two, we would have a permanent proctor and it would look like scenario two for that class for the entire semester. I do wanna talk a moment about the exact procedure if a child is sick. So let's suppose that every, so I'm gonna sort of take a step back and let's go through the day of a child. Every morning when each child who is slated to come to Blue Ridge that day, so a hybrid student who's expected to come to school, we would want you to fill out a Qualtrex survey. So that's a survey delivered to you that you'll indicate if you're available to come to school. And you'll know that through a green check. If you get a green check, then you have successfully answered the questions in a way that the Virginia Department of Health and the CDC is welcoming you to school. If you get an X, we would not want you to come to school that day. We would want you to remote in as a learner so you continue to learn, but not in person if you receive an X. Let's suppose you forget and you come to school and you did not complete your survey. We have a protocol put in place in block one or five, depending on if it's an A day or a B day, for kids to take their uh, Qualtrics screener in that right away. If they're green, they would stay and go through the day. But if they were to be a red X, then a process would be in place to move that student to the nurse's station. And the nurse would evaluate that child. And if the X creates a concern about that child potentially having a COVID symptom, we have a second health room we call a care room. And the care room is monitored by a health official. And if the student was moved to the care room, you would get a call as the parent that were concerned about your child, that some of their symptoms have met the screener, or we believe they are pre or COVID, could potentially be COVID symptoms, and we would ask you to come pick that child up. Based on Loudoun County Public School protocol, then your child would either go to a healthcare provider to be cleared through a test or wait out a 10-day quarantine. If we needed to do contact tracing, then we would do that through the nurse. One of the reasons we have our eight-foot bubble or our six-foot bubble is that if that occurs, that it has the least impact on other students as possible whether it's a staff member or a student, so that we maintain the highest level of safety as we return to instruction. So some timelines that are important. Right now, we have this timeline around selecting, around selecting the choice for semester two. Again, there are two choices. Choice one would be a hybrid learner that means that you're selecting for your child to attend two days in person learning. Tuesday, Wednesday, which is an AB pair, or Thursday, Friday. And in a moment, I'm gonna discuss how we decide which days go with what child. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Or you're selecting distance learning. If you select distance learning, then semester two will look just like semester one. You will receive your instruction through a distance learning platform, which is Schoology and Google Meets. You'll be instructed four days a week. So you'll come to school virtually, okay? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You will be with the other students who are hybrid or hybrid distance, and everyone will be taught concurrently at the same time. So that is the selection that parents are making now across Loudoun. 
January 4th, we welcome back our secondary teachers as they prepare to teach your students. Also, we'll have professional development to greet them so that we can begin to really develop the models Ms. Griffith Cochran talked about, which is robust instruction in the concurrent model. And finally, January 21st, health conditions permitting, we will implement this stage that we're discussing today. Okay, so that ends the PowerPoint portion of the presentation, but I'm going to jump into lots of questions that you all have sent in. So one question I think is really important is how do we decide or select who comes Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, Friday? That to me is a very important question. So I wanna first start off by saying that the elementary and secondary are slightly different. So if you have an elementary child, those students may be going either Tuesday, Thursday, or Wednesday, Friday. However, middle and high secondary students will go Tuesday, Wednesday, that's a pair, or Thursday, Friday. So those two models are slightly different. The secondary model of middle school will be aligned. So middle and high school will work together so that students who have siblings at high school, because we have lots of Bulldogs and Viking families, they'll be on the same two-day schedule. So for example, if your child attends Thursday, Friday at Blue Ridge, your older children or child will attend Thursday, Friday at Valley. That may not be exactly similar at elementary, but will be for secondary. So how will we make that determination? Well, some of it depends on you all and your selections. If we, once we, at the, at, after the 20th, we're going to have everyone's selection and we're going to list everyone alphabetically because that is the easiest way to make a 50-50 split. And we want a 50-50 split as close as we can. Because remember that earlier when I talked about if there's 20 students in a classroom and 16 elect hybrid and four distance, we want the 16 as much as possible to be eight and eight. A 50-50 split maximizes our space. In the case of that 16, we certainly wouldn't want 15 on one day and one on the other. That would not be safe. And on the other side, that wouldn't be, we'd have so many students in a distance setting that the one student that would be here in the hybrid setting, that wouldn't work out at all. So we want to run a 50-50 split. So we are going to put all the kids in an alphabetical order, and we are going to find approximately about the middle, and we're going to create the 50-50 split. And a group of those students will go Tuesday, Wednesday, and another group of those students, the other half will go Thursday, Friday. And I don't want to say that 8 m will go Tuesday, Wednesday. We have to look at that data. But we're going to start with that 50-50 split because it maximizes the safety and the efficiency. So I had a, a question that came in the earlier session was, can a family request a set of days? And the answer is no. Because if we were to take requests from all kinds of different families, it would begin to change that 50-50 balance in a way that would not be equitable or safe. Because if we, if we did it for one family, we would want to do it for all families. And then all of a sudden, it just creates an a, a issue in that balance. So we need to make that balance. That balance keeps us safe and stay uh, committed to that decision. Okay? So that is one important question. Another question that came up was about mask wearing. So the students will be required to ma wear a mask all day long, as well as on the bus, and the teachers is, uh, also. The mask breaks will really just occur around eating food. So th that is uh, something, even wearing masks in band. The Loudoun County Public Schools has purchased special masks that have like a flap for one's uh, mouthpiece. So if you're playing the saxophone, you'll be able to insert the saxophone and play the saxophone through the mask. The mask is going to do its best to capture the aerosol of breath and just blow it into the saxophone. And we have a bonnet on the other side of that saxophone or clarinet or flute or something like that or French horn. We have a bonnet to capture the aerosol coming out the other side. So we're going to do our best and the kids are spaced 10 feet apart with a 10 foot bubble for the teacher. So in every possible way, we're going to maximize the mitigation strategies to have students meaningfully here, but also to keep them safe. 
So some other questions that are excellent and very important. There's a question about schedule changes. So we do not and do not plan to make any schedule changes, which means the teachers that your children currently have will be the teachers that they have starting January 21st. We're not switching schedules around because we know that the relationship that your children have built with their teacher is important for the continuity of instruction, and we do not want to change that. So when they come back to school in either setting, distance learner or hybrid learner, they're going to have the same teacher. Some of those teachers may be teaching remotely, and we'd have a proctor in that class, but they would still have the same teacher. So there's a question about cleaning. Can students bring wipes and desk cleaning? So the so Loudoun County is very cognizant of putting viricide, which is the chemical that we use to sanitize and disinfect on desks every single class, because we do not want students to ever have any kind of reaction to having that chemical on every desk they touch every block. So we are not cleaning desks between every block. Loudoun County prefers students do not bring their own cleaning supplies because we don't know how that cleaning product would react with the viricide that's still on the desk. So we want to keep kids safe, but we also have to be conscious of putting chemicals on everything so that it doesn't in some way create reactions or rashes or something of that nature. Every During the day, we are on a two-hour cycle of high touch points. So you have custodians moving through that are cleaning every single door handle, bathrooms, they are cleaning the uh, water fountains. They are wiping all of this down on a two hour cycle so that we keep these high touch points uh, clean. Also, every single room, every single room is going to be sanitized each night by the custodial staff. Uh, let's see. Will hybrid teachers get to meet with teachers during resource? So, uh, excuse me, will hybrid students get to meet with teachers during resource? So let's talk a little bit about meeting with teachers. So I would say yes to that. That, uh, but, but I have to make sure that everybody recognizes that, that meeting with, with students is going to look different. Whereas before, we would have students kind of right next to us, and we would be helping and tutoring a student along. We can still do that, but it's going to be from a six foot distance so that or eight feet. So we maintain that bubble because as you and we're all aware. This virus has asymptomatic features and therefore you could be working with a student who or a student could be working with a teacher who seems perfectly fine, but later develop COVID. And we need to protect the school and ourselves against those asymptomatic features by socially distancing and wearing a mask. So yes, we would want a child to go to math lab and to see their teacher at resource, but just recognize that that distance between them will be maintained even in that structure so that we stay safe. So, so a question came in about if a child has a cold, would they need to get a COVID test? That's an excellent question because obviously the winner is going to bring colds that aren't COVID related. According to the process and procedure of Loudoun County Student Health Services, if a student takes the morning screener and, <coughs> excuse me, and indicates that they in some way have a ache or a headache, or something that could be associated with COVID. Now it might not be, and they click yes, then they would not come to school that day. Then we would want them to see a medical provider. And maybe it turns out that they don't have COVID or they have strep or something completely different. They would need to quarantine for 10 days or have a clearance from a medical professional to return. If they were to be COVID positive, then we would work the health department would work with contact tracing so that we could alert any students that we felt necessary through the Department of Health. Or if they weren't, then we would just work through the protocol, which would be a 10 day quarantine or the health provider letting us know it wasn't COVID. It was something different. 
or school nurse will be in charge of making sure that each family, if that were to happen, knows exactly what to do to reintegrate their child to school. What we would say is if a child is not feeling well and they get a red X, that the that we would not want them to come to school. We would want them to either go see a health provider or you know, get the rest they need. And if they could come to it that the class that day as a distance learner, we'd still want them to, but they wouldn't be required. They could certainly be absent from school because they weren't well. And then we could work through the COVID process depending on their diagnosis. So I'm just looking over, I've got a board with some questions on it. Oh, I've got a question about homeroom. So we have homeroom every day at Blue Ridge Middle School and have for years and years and years. And homeroom allows us to deliver excellent PBIS lessons and a variety of other things. However, homeroom to block one or homeroom to block five represents an extra transition. And we would like to eliminate that transition. So we built in time in homeroom for morning announcements and PBIS lessons, or excuse me, we built in time to blocks one and five. So our bell schedule will revert back to last year's bell schedule starting January 21st. We'll start school at 8.50. Each child will go to block one or block five if they are hybrid in person that day, depending on if it's an A day or a B day. We're, we've built in time so that we can have those typically homeroom activities in blocks one and five. So that is a little bit of a difference, but we feel like that extra transition, we can simply manage away without losing anything, still keeping our total block time of 82 minutes and having our excellent morning announcements as, as usual. So I'm looking over at some questions and I'd like to address screen time. So right now we have Learning Lab and Learning Lab helps to mitigate screen time because we have opportunities for students to take screen breaks. We have opportunities for kids to take screen breaks and then come back and work one on one. We have opportunities within that Learning Lab time for extra support and lots of things that we believe work very well for distance learners. Well, what about Learning Lab in the new hybrid virtual setting? So we agree that screen time is a impactful feature for students. It causes students to be fatigued, causes students to be mentally worn out. And we're gonna build screen time breaks into the lessons. It won't be exactly learning lab per se, because we'll have a set of learners right in front and we're not going to tell those learners who are right in front of us to stop learning. We are going to have screen breaks for the students at home and the students that are in front because the students who are in person will still be utilizing their screen for potentially some portions of the lesson. For example, it may be that students are working collaboratively even though they're all together. We can't have them scoot together because we can't go inside that bubble. So it may be that these, these students are right here in front of us, but they are working virtually in a breakout group even though they're just six feet away from each other but it's not safe for them to be one foot away from each other. So we are going to provide a learning lab-like break, but it's going to be spaced out through the blocks and may not look exactly like learning lab was in distance learning. I'm looking over at some questions. Uh, there's questions on keeping a safe distance during instruction. Again, we plan for all teachers to be in that bubble at the front of the classroom. Uh, it's different for teachers to stand at the front of the classroom and not walk out and have proximity to students. It's very natural for, for teachers to move around the classroom. That just won't, that's just not going to be, you know, a feature of this time in education. We're going to have to stay connected to the front. Students are going to be wearing uh, uh, masks the entire time and teachers as well. So, so that will be something where teachers being at the front of the classroom with their masks on and the students will be out listening uh, with their masks on as well. So the students will be, be wearing masks all day long other than when they're eating. So there's two opportunities to eat. 
We offer a grab-and-go breakfast in the morning that is up, it's going to be offered to all students free of charge through Loudoun County Public Schools. So students will eat in their first or fifth block class. Lunch will be in the cafeteria. Our cafeteria currently has 120 desks in it. They are all spaced apart. They, it does look very different than tables. So students who socialize by sitting at a common table and chatting and talking and doing things, uh, that won't necessarily be the case. Will they still be able to talk to kids next to them? Yes. Uh, will they be wearing a mask? Not while they're eating. However, it will look different. Uh, we did show a picture of our cafeteria earlier in the presentation being all spread out. And, uh, you know, that is reflective of our time period right now. So I'm looking over at some questions. So there's a question about IEP services and students will receive IEP services and special instruction assistance while in the hybrid model and also in the distance model. So the needs of any student with an IEP will be met, whether that child is in present right in front of us or whether they are concurrently virtually coming into class. Let's talk about drop off in the morning. It has been a practice at Blue Ridge when students arrive to go and sit in a holding area. We typically used the auditorium for seventh and eighth grade students and sixth grade students went down to the cafeteria. Students from seventh and eighth grade also could go down to the cafeteria if they selected breakfast for that morning. The holding areas were a great way for kids who were walking or being dropped off or maybe came on an early bus run to have a place to sit before we officially started school gave us a chance to talk with kids, and those spaces were monitored in the morning by typically the dean or assistant principal or myself of the grade. It was a great way to start our day. And we certainly miss starting our day that way, coming in to uh, return to learn. We will not be able to do that in return to learn with semester two. That particular area of congregating students, we need to mitigate that. So we mitigated it by starting school at 8.30. So if you bring your child to school earlier than 8.30, we would ask that the child please wait in the parking lot until 8.30 and then enter the building. We would want them to enter at the entrance of their first or fifth block class, so we use the entrances differently and efficiently. Having all the kids come in one entrance isn't as wise as using multiple entrances when we can, and we can do that because we have three or four different entrances to get into the school. So at 8.30, we will open those up. For the students who select hybrid, we're going to make that very clear as we move in December and January, what your entrance is. You will come right in. You will go to your, your first or fifth block class. Remember, there's no locker to stop at. So you will have your backpack on and maybe a winter coat. You will come in. If you would like a grab and go breakfast, that would be available. You would not have to. You would sit in first or fifth block and you would wait for the opportunity to start school. Starting school would start at 8.50 because during that time, other students are arriving, right? Other kids are walking to school or riding their bike or being dropped off or coming by bus. So other kids are coming into school and they're getting their breakfast and they're starting their day or they're waiting for the beginning of school. We have a great uh, direct reading time. So kids would probably be reading during that time, waiting for school to start at 8.50. Promptly at 8.50, we would have morning announcements and we would be off and running for that A day or that B day. So it's important to understand how students will arrive and they'll dismiss very similarly at the end of the day. Let's talk about distance learning students. So if you're a distance learner, how will you feel included in the class? Well, we're still gonna monitor the chat, but we're also gonna work with kids to unmute themselves and ask a question. Because as much as the teacher will be teaching to the kids in front of them, the teacher is also responsible for the instruction of the students who are remotely distance learning. That would be the group of only distance learners and the group of students who are hybrid, but distance learning for those two days. So the teacher is going to be teaching to the kids in front of him or her and also monitoring the chat. Is it possible that while that teacher is talking to the kids in front that they miss a question in the chat? Yes, that's possible. Are they going to come back and keep looking at it? They will but we really want kids to unmute themselves and ask a question. We're going to have uh, uh, microphones so that students will be able to hear very clearly 
if you are a distance learner, what's happening? So if a student asks a question in the class, the students at home will absolutely hear that question and that answer. Likewise, if students unmute themselves, it will uh, translate that question into the ability for everyone to hear it. So if a student unmikes themselves and says, you know, can, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Jones or Mr. and Mrs. Smith, please uh, go back over that question, then they will they will go back over that question and hear. I'm going to ask for Mrs. Hawk's help on the screen, please. So I hope that's clear about distance learning. If they unmute themselves and ask a question, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, could you please just kind of go back over that? We'll hear that through the microphone, and then the microphone will also amplify that question answer, and everyone can hear it. So that will be a great opportunity to create that one class feeling, even though we've got kids at home as, as well. So we have built 15 minutes into the shifts, 12 to 15 minutes into the shifts so that we can clean the, each of the lunch tables. And there's a bunch of, you know, we're using desks, so there's 120 of those, but we're gonna clean them all. And that gives time for the chemical to dry. We don't have enough time between classes for that same process to occur, but we do with lunch shifts because we, we build those lunch shifts. So we currently have three lunch shifts. We typically have four. So we're not having a fourth lunch shift. We're taking that shift time and building it into transition. So we take the current three minutes that we have between shifts, we put in an extra 10 minutes to have between 13 and 15 minutes so that we can clean all the desks and have that chemical dry for the next person who has to eat at that spot. So we have a question, can hybrid students attend distance learning if they are sick? The answer is yes. We certainly don't want any student to feel that they have to attend anything sick. We'd want them to get the rest they need, but they could. So let's just say, for example, a student's not feeling well that day, and on their COVID screener, they get an X. We would not want them to come to school. But if they felt well enough to attend classes, that Google link still lives in Schoology. So they would simply go to that and become a distant learner for that day. If they're not well enough, then we certainly wouldn't want them to feel obligated to attend. We would have that child be absent for school that day. So let's talk a little bit about students moving around the building. I think it's very important that today when you leave, you have a picture of what your child will be doing and carrying their book bag and their winter coat and their potential instrument is definitely something that you need to picture because we have lockers, kids use those lockers, we have PE lockers, and we have instrument rooms for storage. The thing is the instrument rooms are a congregation place. The instrument storage rooms aren't large enough for kids to sort of flood in there and put their instruments. So it's best practice for us not to use those rooms. So we're going to ask students who have small instruments like clarinets and flutes and different instruments like that to carry them in their backpack. So in their backpack, it could be something like this. Imagine your child's carrying their backpack all day long. And usually at Blue Ridge, we don't let kids carry backpack because we don't have enough space, but we will because we'll only have half the students. So your student will have their backpack and in their backpack could be their winter coat. It could be their lunch. It could be a Chromebook. It could be a Chromebook charger. It could be a few supplies to take notes. It could be uh, their instrument, such as a clarinet or a flute. Those actually fold down to a very small case. And they're carrying that around all day long. They're taking it class to class to class. They're taking it to PE on the days that they have PE. So in, when they go to PE, they're going to put that backpack, they'd put it in the uh, stands. So we would keep the stands open where uh, fans sit, and they would put it there because they, they won't have a locker room. So if you have a... Uh, a tuba or something like that, we do not expect students to carry around large instruments. A large instrument could be a French horn, it could be a cello, it could be a trombone. So those instruments, we're going to make opportunities for them to leave them on the slate benches. We don't have a lot of space, so that's why we can't offer that maybe to a flute player or a clarinet player, we'd have to ask them to carry it around. Our tuba players actually, 
those tubas stay in class. Uh, we don't carry tubas around per se, but we do have the trombones and the French horns and the saxophones would be something that we would do our best to accommodate. So we will we will absolutely work that out. All right, folks, uh, that looks like all the questions that we have. We know we didn't nearly get all of them, and we certainly are here for you to continue to send us questions. You can always email me. At, uh, my my email is right on the website as well as both assistant principals. You can email the dean or the counselor. We are available by phone as well to talk through all of your questions. But just know that we'll there are some questions that we can't answer. One question is we won't know some very specific things until we know the percentage of returned hybrid students. So some of the questions on will I come on an a, B, pair Tuesday, Wednesday, or will I come on Thursday, Friday? We won't know that until December. As soon as we know whether your family will return on a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, Friday, we will let you know and transportation so that they arrange uh, a, bus, a bus run for the days that your child is at the bus stop. But that wouldn't be something where I could tell you uh, this week or next, whether your child is on that first AB pair or the second AB pair, if indeed you are considering a uh, hybrid uh, uh, as a return. Okay, folks, uh, have a great Thanksgiving time period and a great holiday season, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.